Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends. My name is Vincenzo and welcome to my channel, Fountain Pen Therapy. Well, this is episode three, weekly recap for the week has just gone by. It's, today is February the 10th, so we're looking at last week's highlights, if you will. And what this recap is meant to do is really to just to provide you some highlights in my own uh, fountain pen world, if you will, uh, some of the pens that I've used, some of the pens that I've ordered, what's in the pipeline, try to give you some uh, opinions, some trends on on um, on what's going on out there, both in pens, not both, in pens, inks, and journals. Um, take a look at some of the reviews that are out there that may, may be of interest to all concerned, uh, certainly some of my favorite ones. So it's kind of a recap of of our world, if you will, the fountain pen community, and basically us, the the uh, you know the passionate collectors, and we're always trying to look for things that um, may be of interest, and that's what this show is all about. Now, I have in the two previous episodes asked uh, you, the viewers, whether or not you like this format, which is the recorded format, or if you would prefer it to be a live format the verdict is still out um, I think the majority for the time being are uh, preferred uh, the recorded aspect because they find that the live aspect sometimes the reviewer gets uh, too involved in reading some of the comments that are appearing on the screen it kind of um, cuts away from 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 the content but um, having said all of that I'm not sure yet what we're going to be doing in the future for the time being we'll continue with the recorded format and then we'll take it from there uh, one one viewer suggested and perhaps that's the way i'm going to do things is why don't you do both in other words do your weekly crap uh, recap recorded and once in a while have a live uh, recap so maybe we'll we'll kind of swing into the live and then see how how things uh go Technically speaking, it's a challenge, but I, I'm getting there. I think we're almost we're almost there. So, uh, without any further ado, let's let's start the highlights for for last week. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is take a look at my uh, pen, uh, you know, the ink pens that I had for the week, and provide you with some of my comments. First of all, this beautiful case, by the way, which I bought on Amazon for about fifty dollars, I really recommend it. I know I had bought another one similar on Etsy from an independent uh, kind of a, you know, a small, small uh, pen case maker, if you will, and wanted to encourage him, uh, an artisan, cost me a little bit more for, actually it wasn't a 12 pen, it was a, a six pen uh, case. But if you're looking to spend a little bit less, unfortunately, Amazon does beat him uh, if you want to encourage the the artisan then that's your that's your prerogative as well so let's look at the pens that i had inked for this week uh and i'll provide you with some of my insights on these pens first of all here are my three moblas which are there as you know all the time my 149 my pencil and my um and my uh, ballpoint for signatures purposes then in terms of fountain pens this joya Metis. Um, what I realized about Joya is usually these pens don't give me any 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 issues at all. Um, this one, by the way, all these pens I've reviewed. So um, the nib on this one is a little bit scratchy. There's something off. So every time I write with it, I kind of um, kind of pull the paper um, or into uh, scratch the paper, and the paper gets gets stuck in between the times uh, so uh, the um, in fact you could probably see that right there now uh, I don't know if the camera is picking it up but there is a well, there you go you see there's a little bit of uh, of, of a, there's just a piece of paper there so this is scratchy nib um, it is otherwise um, very enjoyable it's a 1.1 stub uh, but again uh, I've got to get rid of that little piece of, uh, you know, that little scratchy. Uh, so that's what I realize about this, which is rare, by the way, because Joya's nibs usually are just perfection. Um, as I mentioned to you, this Lotus author 
great pen folks if you can get your hands on now i noticed that i'm Peyton, um where i bought this Peyton street pens may no longer have it it's probably sold out i probably contributed to that this pen is with uh, uh alum light um uh, material is just 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 really gorgeous uh, i don't know if i i think i ran out here let me just check yeah you see it's 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 probably uh, there's probably very little ink left there but this this pen it to me is is going to be very hard to get rid of um then i have my ben U euphora with that schmidt um schmidt broad nib um ben U look at this i mean it it's just with that broad nib and that schmidt nib just absolutely fabulous um again a real real go-to pen has become a little bit um a little bit over the top with all these shiny uh sparkles i know i when i was in a meeting in, a, in my conference room um, i think i was on tuesday of this week i was meeting with a client and he noticed that i was writing with this pen he says my god what is that and so I had to <laughs> explain. Um, then I, I have my Rang, Ranga Abimenu uh, with the Schmidt nib that I ordered and that I, I mentioned last week. I made a big mistake here, folks. I filled this pen with uh, Chiku Rin um, Hiroshisuko ink. And I realized it's just too light for me. Uh, the pen is not performing at all. Now, is it the nib? It shouldn't be the nib um, so I'm gonna get rid of that ink it's just a little too light for my uh, I you know I went with a green ink but I think I chose the wrong one so stay tuned we'll see if that nib is the problem or the ink I also uh, this I, I, I really use this pen a lot this um, this week this is the uh, Leonardo uh, yeah there's no more ink uh, the Leonardo Officina um, Furore aqua petra color with the red with the rose um, rose gold trimmings very nice i ended up uh, essentially emptying it out uh, i got my Majon c4 this is my uh, go-to red ink pen for corrections or for note taking uh, side notes on pdfs etc uh, i was using this one and i decided to use my newly acquired um Ongdian a24 as well I've got some red ink there as well uh, and that worked out nicely especially for my things to do list in my Obonichi uh, journal uh, that worked out well so there you have it that's the highlights for my ink pens at the office now the next thing I'd like to take a look at with you is what pens were delivered uh, to me this week um, Got some nice really some nice surprises for you folks i'm i've got these five pens that were delivered to me and i gotta tell you i am very 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 pleased um first of all this uh wing sung 699 as i mentioned i had ordered this pen just to get a feel of what an 823 a pilot custom 823 feels like and i've got to tell you if it feels anything like this pen I'm in business and I'm expecting that with a 14 karat nib the A23 will be an even better writing experience but I've enjoyed this pen so much that I'm seriously considering whether I'm going to spend the three four hundred dollars on the A23 this wing song look at this I mean this wing song has a I think it has a medium or even a fine nib I forget and it writes like a broad um no skips nice and thick uh i gotta tell you i i'm really pleased uh i may end up ordering quite a few of these i'll probably get all the other wing sunk 699s and fill them all up but in terms of girth in terms of size in terms of feel yeah i'm very tempted it posts really nicely so that a23 i gotta tell you is on my radar i saw it on sale on um ebay um, I can get one from Japan at $256 plus $6 of shipping, approximately $265 Canadian, which for me, that's probably the best price. I saw one at $330 Canadian on Amazon. 
Um, and then the rest are all American sites, and they're all going between three, three fifty, four hundred dollars. So it's it's on my uh, jump list, as they say. The next pen I got is this. Um, yeah, you may recognize this and say, "Well, uh, Vincent, you seem to have uh, uh, you're late. This is the uh, mag This is the Jinao 9019. It's been out for more than a year. No, what I ordered, folks, is this Heartbeat nib." Um, I will be reviewing that nib a little more closely, but yeah, it's a heartbeat nib. Um, very, very nice. I got to tell you, let me just, uh, maybe I won't review the pen and I'll just do that here. Um, uh, yeah, it's got this, uh, just a heartbeat kind of a shape to the nib. It's a number eight uh, size nib, by the way. Um, okay, camera, cooperate. Um, let me just, uh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, and I gotta tell you, this thing is just an absolute joy. So this is the Jin Hao heartbeat. And it's a number eight steel medium nib. Juicy, 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 folks. Um, just an absolute gusher. Very, very nice. I'm glad I got it. So it, it, this kind of just adds that nib to my Jin Hao collection. And I got to tell you, uh, it's a slow... Well, we'll look at the trends later on. I'll, I'll reserve that comment for later. But just to say, this this pen is really, uh, it really impressed me. I, I really recommend that you get that uh, heartbeat, especially if you don't have... Jin Hao. Uh, I also got this new color, which I think is really, really nice. This kind of lime green. Uh, it it also has the new, uh, and I think Chris Rapp does a, a review, and I'll mention that later. It also has a new kind of uh, cartridge with this plastic top here, so that it looks a little bit better uh, in in a transparent pen. Um, that's what I think it's there for, but. In any event, I really recommend that Heartbeat nib. Very, very nice. So that's the Jin Hao. Ah, yes, I finally got my Jin Hao. Uh, Jin Hao, um, Ear the Dragon um, pen. Uh, and it, yes, folks, it does have a number six size nib, which is good news. And I'll mention something particular about this, uh, uh, about this pen and other orders in, in just in the trends section of my review i will be doing a detailed review of this so we won't get into it i've not even inked yet i then have folks this pen i really really like this pen now i'm sure it looks very familiar to you and it may even be some of you will say hey that that really looks like a pelican uh, i'm not sure if this is a, looks like a pelican m600 or m800 probably 800 because it's the Admoc M800. So I'm assuming it's meant to imitate or is inspired by the Pelican M800. Just an absolute joy. This pen, yeah, I, I emptied it. That's why it's not writing. Um, uh, I, in fact, brought it to work and used it one day and I emptied the cartridge because I took those for almost the whole day. And the nib, that Schmidt broad nib that comes with this pen, it's, it's a shame that I've seen it on AliExpress and the colors of the resin that are left are not the nicest. This is probably the nicest for me in any event. You know, there were some blue galaxy, some blue colors. The, 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 the advertisement shows you the colors, but when you go and choose, you see they're all sold out. But I really, really recommend. But I'm going to do a detailed review of this pen and compare it to, to the M800. Uh, through photographs and all the rest because I don't own an M800 and we'll see how close it really um, imitates that pen. But this Admoc, it's now three pens I've bought. Um, it's, it's, it's starting to become um, a regular in my uh, sight, if you will. So that's the Admoc. Then the last pen, folks. Finally, I think we got a pen from Majon that is worth mentioning. Now, some of you might say, hmm, that, f that really looks like some other pen and we'll reserve our comments for the detailed review. I probably put up a review of this pen early this week. 
This is the Majon P138 uh, with a piston filler. Uh, so very, very nice. Uh, it screws in and it 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 um, it uh, posts very nicely. This is a nice pen, and it's about time I think that Majon comes up with uh, something in my view that is nice. We'll see how those how that nib um, performs, but uh, stay tuned for my detailed review. Very very nice pen. I'm glad I'm glad I bought this. So there you have the pens that I purchased this week or that were delivered to me this week, and they will all go into the pipeline, and reviews will be published sometime very, very soon. Now, what else have I got here? Um, uh, in terms of... Um, in terms of... Um, pens that are still in the pipeline that I've yet to receive, I've got my... Um, um, Jinao 9016. I'm looking forward to that one. It's just a smaller version of the 9019. So I'm looking forward to that one. I've got my fully win. Let, let me just uh, maybe put up on the screen for you. Uh, just bear with me here. Um, yeah. Okay. So if we can go to. Um, Okay, here we go. So well, I've got the 9016 that I've ordered. I've ordered it in this particular um, orange transparent color. So I'm really looking forward to the 9016 just to see how it uh, it all uh, works out. I then ordered this fully win. Um, and maybe we can take a picture. Yeah, this fully win uh, carbon fiber fountain pen medium nib i always like fully win i like the fully win nibs as well so i'm looking forward to uh, receiving that one that one as well the other thing folks that I'm, i've ordered is i've been curious about this wordsworth and black fountain pen sets um i've ordered this one and another one i think i'm going to do a review and probably compare it to the scrivener uh, pen i think they, they're in the same kind of category steel pens that are meant to be for you know business uh business use if you will i've always been curious the 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 um the marketing around these pens is excellent i'm sure that it probably will not live up to the hype but i, I was curious so i took the jump for 35 bucks i decided i'd buy it and i'll give you maybe you are you're you're wondering about this pen and if it's worth the purchase well uh, when i get it we'll review it and we'll take a closer look at it the next pen that I've ordered and that I'm looking forward to receiving, I've ordered it from Toronto Pen Shop. It's, you know, if I promised to you that I would, you know, once a month try to recommend a pen. This is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Magico Pitacusa. It's at 246 Canadian, so, you know, less than $200 American, if you will. It's in, it's in the pipeline. I'm looking forward to receiving that. For so far, my objective with Leonardo, of course, is to buy pens when they're cheap, but try to get at least one pen from every every collection, every model. Um, and uh, the Pithacusa or the Memento Magical was missing in my collection, so that is in the pipeline as well. And I should be uh, receiving it sometime soon. Okay, so why don't we... Um, Let's look at what else we've got on the... Uh, okay, in terms of journals, inks and journals, let's take a look at that. Uh, um, now, in terms of inks, I have not uh, ordered any inks. Um, I'm still waiting for... Um, and maybe I will cut to that. Just bear with me here. Yeah, I've ordered these three inks from the wet pen. The wet pen has a is a um, YouTube channel and Matthew from Wetpen let me tell you this 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 gentleman is just I mean it is is uh, reviews are just fabulous okay uh, very very nice reviews and he's decided to uh, actually go into and and make these three or you know blend mix these three inks and put them up for sale I know he had some small hiccups but he finally confirmed to me I ordered all three that you see on screen um, look at that it's got it I think they're perfect you've got this um, Renier blue that's got some shading and, sh and, and sheening 
you've got this Elliot uh, Elliot Bay uh, that's got some of that green uh, grayish sheen, and then you've got the Deception Pass, and all they're all Seattle inspired um, um, inks, if you will. It's got some green and blue. So I think I think these three inks are just gorgeous, and I'm really looking forward to receiving them, and hopefully um, that will uh, come in sometime very 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 soon now one thing that i did want to mention and i don't know if you guys have <laughs> have come to the same realization as i have and i i mean we all know the shimmering inks are gorgeous when you sh swatch them they give you that shimmer they give you that that extra edge if you will but i'm starting to realize that these inks in my pens uh with the exception of some of the shimmering inks from Jacques Herbin um, from the anniversary collections. Probably, I would think that those are probably the only shimmering inks that I've had uh, some success in. The rest kind of, we all know they clog our pens, but we always think that uh, that we can succumb that or maybe that our pen is better uh, than the other pen. Uh, but you know what? I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to purchase, at least for a little while, any more shimmering inks. I'm going to try to concentrate on sheen, sheen and uh, and shading inks. Um, I don't like those light uh, sailor manual inks. It's not my style, but uh, that's what I'm going to concentrate on. I think shading and sheening is going to be my thing. I think for unless there's some shimmering ink that comes up that is really, really performs well in pens, uh, I'm going to try to stay away from them. Now, let me know. Do you know of any inks, any shimmering inks that really, uh, that, that, that perform much better in pens and they don't clog the pen uh, as much as others uh, that you would recommend? Please leave it down in, you know, in your comments. I would really appreciate it. I know Jacques Arbain, um, I, I think I can still go with them from time to time. And even there, you know, there may be some clogging depending on the pen that you use. But if you know of any others, I mean, I've got a bunch and maybe the ones you would recommend are part of my collection. I've not done an exhaustive uh, study of all these shimmering inks to see which ones perform better than others. And maybe that's one of my future projects. And I think it would be very interesting to see and provide you with insights on which shimmering ink uh, does not clog pens, for example. Uh, it, it will require some experimenting and, and, and a lot more research, but that's a future project. But for the time being, I'm staying away. I'm not buying any more shimmering inks. There you have it. Let me know how you guys feel on that. Um, I still have to review uh, the Van Diemen's. Hold on. I think I've got it here. Not too far away. Yeah, this Van Diemen's 20... Um, 2023 collection um, very very nice collection um, uh, here you have it let me just turn it around um, really really uh, worthwhile I think uh, if you didn't see my last week's review uh, there you have it you've got a catalog and I've got 12 beautiful links uh, I'm going to be reviewing these very shortly I don't know if I'm going to do it into three uh, or you know it's 12 I'm not sure I'm going to review all 12 all at once but maybe in a couple of reviews, that's coming up. I've got a lot of pens. I've got a lot of reviewing to do. I've got a lot of catching up to do. So, but I again, I look out for this collection. It's going to be very, very nice. And if you use fountain pen therapy as your uh, passcode or as a discount code, I think you they still Van Diemen's will still honor my the ten percent discount. So that's it when it comes to inks for this week now let me just uh, um, let me sip on my espresso now what have I got for you for um, journals well let me talk to you about where I'm at when it, when it comes to journals as you know in my previous um, recaps I've, I've been really lately inspired by Hemingway Jones and in that regard Hemingway Jones keeps talking about you know he's a specialist in handwriting he goes out he goes out to libraries and he does research and he, he you know he takes out he takes out samples of uh, 
of law, you know, historical uh, handwriting uh, a specialist is what I would call him. Uh, and he kind of try and, and, and he copies that handwriting in his journal and he's done some cross writing. I think one of his videos had like 53,000 views folks on cross writing, which is fascinating. Now I've never been able to get into, you know, this calligraphy handwriting and you know, you got Shaq MD. We'll talk about him in, in a few minutes who, who does all these videos, these shorts about him writing with, with, um, you know, very eloquent handwriting. So what I decided to do, and I don't know how long it's going to last. <laughs> okay. I decided to, and maybe we'll just go to my camera, my uh, camera one here, we'll cut. Um, I decided to buy uh, this French ruled notebooks. You know, this is that ruled um, that, uh, you know, that you see on Shaq MD's um videos and I'm starting to practice I, I noticed that my handwriting is kind of straight up it's not you know it's not cursive on or, or it's not you know to the slanting to the side if you will and I started just to see if I could get into it you know in, in, and um, so that's my project for the future I think for the next couple of weeks I'm going to try to first I'm just experimenting now with the notebooks I noticed that this French rule notebook, I bought this on, um, by the way, on um, Amazon. I think it cost me $7 for this notebook. The paper is not the greatest. There is some feathering with some of the inks and some see-through. But, you know, for terms of just practicing, it, it's more, it does more than, more than enough, uh, you know, uh, it does the trick. But I also bought the, you know, the real stuff, which is the Clairefont 10 uh, notebook with this uh, French ruled again this is I realized that this is much smaller than this French rule um, so I'm not sure I I, uh, I did the right thing uh, I may have to revisit this French I didn't realize there were different uh, different measurements but all to say is that that's a project for me uh, Hemingway Jones keeps saying folks journal in fact he's got one the live video this week was about journaling and and how what role it plays in his life etc etc um, so folks that's my project that's my journal and that's my entry for this week in my highlights uh, and stay tuned I'll let you know how how far I get and if I uh, uh, if I lose patience in fact I saw a um, I don't know if it was part of a podcast or a, a live show from Anderson Pens where they recommend certain handwriting books. There's about four or five of them. I think I'm going to buy one of those so that I can get some idea of, you know, some calligraphy lines. You get to see how the, you know, the, 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 the each of the letters are supposed to be written in certain styles so that I can start practicing. And uh, we'll take from there. We'll see if I can permanently... Um, uh, you know, adopt some of that handwriting, which is not easy at, uh, at, at my age. In any event, there you have it. That's the journal entry for this week. Okay, so what have we got next? I'm looking at my notes here. Let me just take a look at my iPad and just to see where we're at. Oh, yes. Um, for the last couple of episodes, just bear with me here. I've been talking to you about my my um, adventure with the Hongdian N24 and that famous cracked cap. Now, let me just cut. You'll remember that in my original review, while I was reviewing this pen, um, and I actually published the review, um, one of the viewers then comment and it says you have a crack on your cap and I hadn't realized it so I had to publish the revised review and it's the revised review that's presently on my YouTube channel. There's that crack. I wrote to Sally at Easy Buy on Etsy. She sent me a replacement cap very quickly. No problem. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to use this cap. I don't want to play around with it too much. If it's fragile, I'm going to leave it in my pen case and just keep using the pen with the cracked wrap, um, cracked cap, and um, leave this stored away. 
wouldn't you know it, a week later, a crack appeared on this pen as well. There you have it. There's the crack without any use at all. So I wrote to Etsy in my last episode. Um, I did mention to you that I would, I was going to sp speak to or write to uh, Etsy and Sally, and I did. And uh, here is the reply that I got. So uh, Sally says, hello, Vincent. Uh, thanks for your message. I'm sorry for this. Uh, for the first batch, this is the wood problem. The wood cap may crack due to temperature is low. Hongdian factory knows this problem and they updated the wood for cap already. I can send a replacement cap to you with your next order together to solve this. Sorry again, regard salary. So first thing I think that deserves um, deserves mention is the fact that Sally at Easy Buy, um, excellent after service or after purchase service, okay? She's now going to send me a second cap, okay? So she's living up to, to her, her reputation. Uh, and thank you again, Sally, for doing this. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, to receiving that replacement cap. Uh, I'm going to be putting a, an order in with um, with Sally this week for one of those pens. I haven't decided which one yet for an additional pen. And um, I'm looking forward to receiving that cap, and I'll keep you advised. So maybe they rectified the problem because this crack uh, is not. I'm not the only one. In my comments, I've had many people um, talk to me about the, the cracks in the cap. Uh, we have Chris Rapp as well that's that's talked about it on one of his reviews. So there you have that. That's my ongoing, if you will, my ongoing um, uh, uh, adventure with this N24 cap. Now, um, trends. I noticed a trend lately. And it um, it started with, um, let me just cut here to my, yeah. It started with this pen, which is the A24. I ordered this pen with a polished medium nib and I got two nibs. Um, I ordered both colors, the red and the white, as you know. And I got, and I, I published a review and I mentioned it in my review, I've got two nibs. A lemon nib, which is kind of an architect grind on it, and a, in this case, an Ongdian number five sized um, uh, nib. So they sent me two nibs, which I, you know, at one point I said, well, I'm surprised. Um, uh, you know, and AliExpress doesn't know who I am. They never reached out to me. Uh, um, had it been Sally from Easy Buy, well, you know, we've, We've been in contact, but um, I could have understood if she added a nib just as courtesy because I order so many pens from her. But no, I bought this pen from AliExpress. And I noticed they put in the package two nibs. That's the first one. The second one, with my Magon, this newly acquired P138, same thing. Um, the pen comes with a lemon nib there you have it it's a lemon i think it's the same grind that architectural grind and i have a magon nib on the side again aliexpress so two nibs with one order okay then i said to myself do i have another pen yes it was in my um Jinal year of the dragon same thing. Um, the pen comes already with a lemon nib. Again, I think it's that architect grind, but I also have a number six Jinhao nib that comes with this Jinhao Year of the Dragon pen. So I don't know if that's a trend or it, am I clicking something, you know, when I order? Uh, because now if you go on AliExpress, there, there's a variety of nibs, there's a long blade, there's, you know, Maybe when I'm clicking makes it such that I'm being charged an, an additional five, six, seven dollars, and they end up sending me two nibs, or is that is that become a trend, or are they?
just trying to get rid of all those lemon nibs, which I hate, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but having said that, it looks like it's a trend. Let me know if you, if you guys in your orders, you're getting uh, two, two nibs. Uh, that, that would be interesting to know. Now, in terms of, in terms of um, other things that I've been looking on the internet, let me just um, uh, click back here. Um, yeah. Um, okay, here we go. Um, some new pens on the block, so to speak, that are, have caught my eye. First of all, I see on Pen Chalet, uh, I see this Magna Carta kind of a Valentine collection. I may end up buying this for my wife for Valentine's. We'll see. But um, if not, I'll have it. I like this red pen. I really like it. Magna Carta appears to have uh, made an impact on the market. So that's one one pen that I'm looking after, uh, looking at. So I thought I'd share that with you. The next pen that I think, or a series of pens is, as you know, Navalor has come, is really active. I mean, they're, they're coming up with pens almost on a weekly basis. Uh, what caught my eye is this uh, special edition um, desert um, desert collection from uh, from from um, um, from uh, Pen Chalet, but they also have what they call the Citrus Skies collection, which is the most recent one. So, uh, I mean, it's one hundred and sixty dollars American, which roughly is about two forty two fifty. Um, uh, Canadian, it's 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 a little pricey, but that that styling, uh, um, uh, the Nautilus styling, and and you know that resin is really interesting. So that's another pen that's kind of caught my eye. A pen Chalet is also selling this, um, and Navalor has come up with the original Plus collection. I mean that's a collection that's existed for some time, but they've come up with this. Uh, Lovina graphite black um, you know and you've got that vacuum filler it, it's really attracting me for $55 it kind of competes with the Twisby or uh, if you will um, and at $55 it's very tempting I may actually pull uh, pull the cord and 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 the wallet and let's see what what gives if I get it if I order it I will let you know and finally uh, what is really, really in my radar. Let me just see if I could put it up on the screen here. Do I have it? Yeah. The Leonardo Galactica. Ah. Momento Zero Two. Look at these pen, folks. I mean, I. it's at 254 euros, which is roughly 254, roughly $270 American so a little more it's not in my 200 dollar range but this pen this universe um they had this one the primary manipulation uh it, it's 405 euros here because that's the gold nib uh but let me tell you they it's really here it is the 254 you can get it in in this primary manipulation at 254 euros uh, this Galactica collection is really, every time I, I, I surf, I go back, take a look at it. I'm looking at the prices, see if anybody's offering it for less. But it's a brand new collection, so the prices are not, uh, you know, are not discounted yet. So there you have it. So that's those are the pens I've been looking at. The next trend that I've been very curious about, and let me just see if I have it here. Um, uh, we'll get to the, my Lotus in a second. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm really curious about Hero. What I noticed is the Chinese pens, uh, at least we're into February, uh, mid-February, and they're, they're not coming up with many pens. I've got to say, Ang Dinian has come up with their Year of the Dragon, Jin Ao as well. It's kind of slow on the Chinese market side, especially on Dian. I would have expected a little more, but maybe it's just me that has no patience. So I've been exploring to see if, you know, that's why I bought some Admoc pens, uh, which I really enjoy, by the way. I, I really like that new Majon P138. We'll see how that writes. But what I noticed is these Hero. So I've been looking at Hero. Let me know how, if you know, have you guys purchased Hero pens? If so, which pen do you recommend? Um, 
you know, people have some very good things to say about the hero uh, Mark, and some people, you, I, I read somewhere that hero and Andean may be related uh, in some way. Um, I'm looking at this pen, which is the Lemon M5 Pattern Acrylic Piston. Um, it's too bad it has a long knife nib, so I'm, I've got a feeling it's probably uh, one of those, uh, you know, architect grinds, but it's a polished 14 carat. At 14 carat, it looks like you can get it for um, for somewhere around $100. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, to seeing whether or not um, there's any more news on this or if anybody does a review on it. But this pen has attracted my attention. Uh, the other pen that has attracted my attention from Hero is, um, is this one, which is the um, high-end Hero H718 with a 10-carat gold piston writer. Take a look at that pen. It looks very, very interesting um, and um, very different um, with a 10 carat gold nib. So let me know if you guys, have you looked at this pen? Um, have you, um, you know, uh, have you considered it? Have any of you actually ordered it? If so, please let me know because I'm, I'm seriously, seriously thinking about buying one. The next pen that I'd like to show you is this Delta. Remember, again, promise, try to find Italian pens for less than $200. Well, I got one for you. This is the Delta Intesa 2.0. There was an Intesa model, the original Delta Intesa model, um, which, you know, before Delta went out of business. This is the 2.0 version. It's selling for 80, uh, you know what, 80.33 euros. You can get it in extra fine, flex, medium, broad, 1.1, 1.5. Um, really recommend it. I really recommend it. Um, it may be um, very nice for you. I know I'm going to pull the, uh, I'm going to pull the plug on this one. Not pull the plug on it. I'm, I'm going to order it sometime very soon. And when I do, I will review it. But that's another pen that I think is worth. Uh, talking about and finally um, as you know I really enjoyed that Lotus that Lotus author pen I think I'm going to buy this look at it's it's on special now this Lotus PSP um, collaboration again with that Alumalite Alumalite uh, material it's got a, a number six nib new in the box citrus splash um, it used to be at I think it was even more than 150. It went down to 150. It's now selling for 135. I think I'm also going to order that pen. So that's in my in my site as well, uh, just because I enjoyed the uh, author model. And Lotus appears to be a real surprise for me for uh, you know an entry in Indian pens. So there you have um, um, the. Uh, Okay, here we go. There you have my highlights in terms of pens that I'm seeing in the pipeline that I think may be interesting. Now, in terms of reviews, uh, YouTube reviews that I wanted to uh, share with you or that I wanted to comment on uh, and provide you with some ins my own reflection and my own my own opinions. Um, first of all, you know, at one point I started to get fed up with the the retailers. Um, uh, reviews they were inundating constantly you know got pen chalet that's four or five shorts a day goulet the same thing atlas um, gold spot samuel naldi pen venture you know and i say okay well these guys are monopolizing you know the reviews but they're retailers so they're, they're in the business of selling you their pens have no illusions although some of them i've got to say especially gold spot you know and, and, and goulet you've got some interesting things to say samuel naldi as well but you know what I, th so I was get really getting fed up and I was going to kind of trash all over them in this review and, and, and complain. And then I realized that my complaints are completely ill-founded. Uh, and this for two reasons. One, if you don't want to listen to these reviews, you know, that's the beauty of YouTube. Just unsubscribe and you'll never be inundated with them and just stop, 
you know, you don't have to, as they say, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it, right? So there's no reason for me to, 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 to complain. But then I realized that they're actually providing us all a service. You know, when I'm going through this recap and I'm building for it and I'm researching for it and I want to show you what pens have just come out, etc. I mean, Goulet does it for us. Goldspot, Anderson Pens, Atlas, uh, Pen Chalet. They all, they, they provide that information for us. So I, on the other hand, if you can tolerate it, and then some of these reviews are really entertaining at the same time. So I really don't, don't know why I was feeling so negative towards them. Uh, on the contrary, I've completely changed my mind. If I don't want to watch, I don't watch. And they give you, you know, insight on new pens that have just come out. Otherwise, you would be stuck really going through all of the websites, trying to figure out what's new, what's not. Uh, and you know what? You subscribe to these services and, uh, you know, they're all in shorts. It takes a few seconds and they give you an idea of all the new pens. So I did want to mention to that. So keep going, guys. Uh, provide us that information. I think it's useful and, um, and, and very entertaining at the same time. Did want to mention Hemingway Jones. By the way, he did, you know, a really kind shout uh, out to my channel during one of his live shows. I think the last live show. Um, yeah, I had reached out, you know, as you know, I've complimented him uh, on, on many occasions and he reached out and, and he thanked me and um, and he kind of, you know, plugged my channel, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then I contacted him. I became a member of his channel. I think we all should be. He does provide a very unique way of looking at things. Um, it, he doesn't concentrate necessarily on pens and, uh, you know, although he does pen reviews, but he's got a completely different approach on, on our hobby. He's very passionate about it and he, different subjects. And one of the subject was, you know, he managed to do a travel, you know, he went to Quebec City, he saw Chateau Frontenac, just this very beautiful hotel that, that's there. He, he keeps going to Quebec City, he enjoys it, him and his family. And he kind of did a travel review and combined it with one of the recent inks that uh, Ferris uh, Wheel Press came out, uh, which is the Frontenac Blue. So only Hemingway Jones can do that, you know, uh, give you a travel uh, a travel review uh, combined with an ink review. Congratulations, Hemingway Jones. Uh, thank you again for entertaining us. I, I uh, you know, I recommend it. Take a look at that video. Very entertaining. I also got um, JG3 um, did a, an interesting review on the Jinao 92. Uh, and, um, um, uh, you know, the Jinao 92, I think, you know, I reviewed that pen as well. Um, here's my version of the Jinao 92. This one was in red. He, I, he, I think, reviews the, the one that's in the gray or black. Very, very nice pen. And I agree with them. This is not... Um, uh, you know, it's a pen to be reckoned with. It's a very, very nice pen that I think has gone unnoticed and under the radar, and I really recommend it. So take a look at his review. He'll provide you with his insight. Uh, 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 so I'm not the only one, as they say. <laughs> okay. You, you've got Chris Rapp 52. Take a look at his review. It's on the Jinao 9019 with a heartbeat nib. I showed it to you in this recap. He goes through a more in-depth review of the both the the differences and the differences in that nib, and, and how it writes and how he enjoys that nib. So uh, take a look. I, I shout out to him. Very very nice review. The, there's Doodlebud who has also a very interesting review. I don't know. I don't know if I had the guts to do it, but he shows you how, how, a close up of a nib grind. He actually takes an, a, a cheaper nib. Uh, I think it's in one of the Majon nibs, and, and he does a grind on it, and he shows you how how to get it done. So if any of you uh, have been thinking about venturing out and doing your own grind on a nib, take a look at Doodlebud. Very interesting video. I may actually um, take the jump and do the same thing on one of my nibs uh, and see how it all works out. Uh, I like that big rock he has to, to, to polish it and to grind. So maybe that's something that I might have to invest in. But having said that, Doodlebud, well recommended. Lastly, I'd like to a big shout out to um, two shorts that I really, really enjoyed. Now, I don't know if I've got them 
no, I don't have them on screen that I can show you, but there's a Samuel Naldi short that lasts just a few seconds where he talks about the therapeutic feeling of a nib, the nib noise on paper. I think it lasts like six seconds. Take a look at that. Really, really nice. And, you know, when I saw the word therapeutic, it, it, you know, it, it, it kind of speaks to me, if you will. So that's part of the therapy that fountain pens give us. It's, it's, that, it's that, you know, that feedback that you get when you put, you know, that nib to paper. Um, is there's just no other feeling. So, shout out to uh, to Mr. Naldi for for that uh, for that very nice video. I think it it kind of says it all, at least for me anyway. The other the other short that I think is fascinating and uh, is is short done by um, Shaq MD, where he takes one of his flex nibs on one of the Magna Carta pens. And he, he's flexing and he's really pushing that nib up and down that paper. And it, it, it's just, I, I just wish, very jealous. I just wish I could, I could write the way that gentleman does. And that's part of my, you know, my new, my new project, if you will, uh, with those new notebooks that I just purchased. I'm going to try to see if I could come even close to what uh, Shaq MD appears to do with his pens. Uh, so you know it, it, it's interesting, and I thought those two shorts were uh, were were very nice, and uh, you know a nice shout out to to both of them. So that uh, really wraps up my my review uh, and my uh, recap for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, and if you've um, lasted this long, then please subscribe. It um, it it helps the algorithm, as they say. A lot of you watch but don't subscribe. Um, uh, it would help the channel. Uh, leave that up, totally up to you. Enjoy your pens. Enjoy your collection. Lots of fountain pen therapy. Grazie, grazie, grazie molto a tutti. Thank you very much to all. Be safe, be well, and see you next week.